Welcome back to another video on the Sports Perspective TV viewers and subscribers. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the West Indies Championship and the top run scorers and top wicket takers so far in the competition. And whether or not, you know, any of them have a chance of making the West Indies squad that tours England, you know, later on um, this year in the summer. Um, so, um, so yeah, so without further ado, we can get straight into it. So, um, so as far as the, the highest run scorers, um the top five run scorers you know are as um follows so we see where um mikhail louis you know he is leading with 549 runs then you have um west indies captain you know craig brackwit you know he scored 473 runs um then kevin sinclair you know who is known more for his bowling you know but he's trying to stake a claim you know as a, a genuine all-rounder uh, he has 471 runs. Amir Django with 449 runs. And um, Jason Mohammed with 442 runs. So those are, you know, the, the top five um, as far as runs scored in the championship so far, you know, heading into the final round. Um, and of those um, five players, you know, obviously the captain, you know, he will, he's the captain. So he will be, so Brad Twitt will definitely be uh, in the West Indies squad. Um, in terms of Mikhail Louis, um, I think he does have a, a good chance of, of making the squad as well. Uh, reason being, so Bradwitt is the opener, so he will be there. Um, Kajaran Chandapal, he has been um, not not been scoring runs for the West Indies of of, of late, and uh, um, other than uh, the century that he scored in um, the previous round, um, in an earlier round of the championship, he hasn't been scoring runs in the championship either. So he is not in the best form, you know, neither domestically um, in the West Indies championship nor for the West Indies, you know, when they do um, play um, matches, right? So um, I'm sure that the, the selectors are giving, um, you know, Mikhail Louis, um, looking at um, Mikhail Louis, you know, and um, maybe thinking of including him in the squad you know as an opening batsman he's done very well for the leeward islands um so he has a, a good chance you know of making making the squad but there's no there are no guarantees when it comes to the west indies selectors you know and there's no guarantee that being the the, the highest run scorer in the west indies um in our west indies competition you know will give you a place in the in in any west indies squad you know we've seen it with do with darren bravo over the years you know, leading uh, run scorer in the championship in previous years, and he was not included in the West Indies squad. Um, uh, but reasons that were given for Bravo's um exclusion, you know, whether con controversial or not, um, different people have different opinions on 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 the Darren Bravo issue. Um, but re uh, a reason that was given by um Desmond Haynes was that you know was bravo's age you know obviously bravo is about 35 now um so he they did say that you know his age um did play a part in his non-inclusion in the squad um louis is only 23 years old and they did say i, I um desmond Haynes did say you know that they're looking towards younger players which they have you know they are developing in the academy and in the west indies a team and so on and so forth so his age um is definitely a plus for him and he's been scoring runs and um the the west indies opening um, position you know has not been performing as well as um we we would like and i'm sure as the selectors would like as well so all of those factors you know definitely bode well for um michael louis and his possible inclusion in the west indies squad to tour england so i would i would um i'm going to assume that he 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 might be a part of the squad, but we'll just have to wait and see. Um, like I said, obviously, Brad Pitt will be in the squad. Kevin Sinclair, you know, he was a part of the West Indies squad that toured Australia, and he did play matches and scored runs uh, for the West Indies as well against Australia, you know, in the lower order. Um, but he was in the team mainly as a batsman. But like I said earlier in the video, you know, Kevin Sinclair is definitely now staking a claim and wants to be recognized as a genuine all-rounder in all forms of cricket. And um, him scoring runs again here in the West Indies Championship, you know, just further goes to show that, you know, he's taking his batting serious, definitely taking his batting serious, and it's paying off, you know. Um, so Kevin Sinclair will be in the 
barring injury, you know, um, he I think he will be a part of the West Indies squad. You know, um, whether or not they just select him as a bowler or as a genuine all-round option, you know, we have to wait and see. But him scoring runs here in the championship is definitely a plus for him, you know, um, as he looks to be recognized as a genuine all-rounder in all forms of cricket. Um, Amir Django as well, you know, he's a middle order batsman uh, for Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and uh, actually, Amir Django. Um, of the top five, he's played the, the least amount of matches. He's only played four matches so far, you know, and um, been scoring a, a lot of runs. You know, he had um, that double century um, in, in round six for Trinidad. You know, so Amir Jangu is definitely one that I would not be surprised if the selectors included him in the squad as well. Because of his batting position, batting in the middle order, you know, um, of the players that toured Australia, you know, Zachary McCaskey and Tevin Imla, they did they never um they ne didn't make the, the starting eleven up 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 in any of the matches. And um they are currently playing in the championship as well. And Django, you know, has outperformed them. So even though they didn't do anything wrong in the Australia series, um, if you're just going based on the form, you know, and con and the consistency, um, Amir Django, you know, definitely you can you wouldn't be upset if he makes a squad, you know, because deservedly so. Um, but again, we have to wait and see what the selectors decide to do. Um, the West Indies team did perform well in the Australia series, you know, and um, I can also understand if the selectors decide to not make too many changes to to disturb the, the chemistry of the team, both on and off the field. That's definitely understandable. Plus, McCaskey and um, Imblat, you know, they have scored centuries in, in recent rounds of the championship as well. So they are coming into um, some form um, for themselves as well. Um, but Django, Django, um, no, he, he, he has a, a good chance of, of making it because of his position, um, his batting position, you know, um, being in the middle order. Um, or the middle order batsmen that he could possibly replace, you know, Kurt McKenzie, are Alric Athenaeus. Uh, Mackenzie did perform well in that Australia series. And Athenaeus, you know, he has been doing his thing as well and um, has performed well when, um, when you know, called up for the West Indies. So I don't expect the selectors to exclude any of them from, from the squad to tour England. But you never know. You know, we have to wait and see. Um, so if I had to, to choose who um, Django would replace, it would either be, you know, Makaski or um, Imlak. In, in my opinion, um, then Jason Mohammed, you know, he's scored runs in the, the championship as well. But, you know, again, going off the selectors rhetoric for excluding um, Darren Bravo um, age, you know, Jason Mohammed is up in age as well. You know, so and he's he's had his, his opportunities in the West Indies team, you know, um, and hasn't. It, the consistency wasn't there when he was for the West Indies, when he played for the West Indies, right? So I honestly don't think um, the selectors will include Jason Mohammed um, in in the squad for England. Um, so, so then let's look at the, the bowlers. Um, so the, the bowlers were the, the, the most wicked so far in the competition. Um, so we see where... Um, so it's Joshua Bishop, you know, uh, the West playing for the West Indies Academy, you know, young right arm off spinner. He has taken 37 wickets so far. You know, spinners are, I have taken, are the sort of top four um, wiki, leading wicket takers in, in, in the competition so far are spinners. So, you know, Joshua Bishop with 37. Then you see where jo, uh, Joel uh, Warkan, you know, with 32 um, wickets. Also, um, Rakim Cornwall, you know, he, he also has 32 wickets. And um, Jeremiah Louis. Well, Ashmead Ned, you know, he has 30 wickets. And uh, Jeremiah Louis, um, the Leeward Islands pace bowler, he has 29 wickets. You know, that's the top five as far as wicket takers in the in the championship so far. Um, so, like I said, four of them are spinners. And um, in the spin department for the West Indies, you know, it was Kevin Sinclair and Gudakesh Moti that was in the, the, the squad that toured Australia. And I do expect them to include to be included in the squad uh, for England again as well. Um, definitely Gudakesh Moti, without a doubt. You know, Gudakesh Moti has been performing for the West Indies in all formats, whether it's Test cricket, 
limited overs cricket, RT20 cricket, Gurakesh Mothi has been performing. And Kevin Sinclair now, you know, he hasn't been um, performing consistently with the ball for the West Indies, but his performances with the bat, you know, will definitely set him apart from these other bowlers in 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 the in in the championship. And um his just is is the, the mere fact that he is um can be considered a, a genuine all rounder, in my opinion. Um, that would get, give Kevin Sinclair the edge as the spinner in the squad over any of these um, bowlers that have taken um, any of these bowlers that are in the top five wicket takers um, so far. Um, so honestly, would not be surprised if none of these bowlers make the squad. Um, but again, I am not the selector. I'm just sharing my opinion on what I think and based on based on history. You know, based on what I've seen the selectors do and based on, you know, the performance of the West Indies team in their most recent series against Australia. You know, um, so they so good performances by them. You know, Warkan here, he's he's represented the West Indies before, you know, as a bowler. And um, so what um I don't know, it depends on, on what the selectors are looking for. Um Warkan might get an opportunity or Joshua Bishop, you know, because the selectors, you know, they have said, you know, they, they are, you know, looking to give opportunities to young West Indian players, you know, especially the ones that have been in their development programs. And Joshua Bishop, you know, just the fact that he's playing for the West Indies Academy, which is a, a development program, a development team of the, 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 the West Indies Cricket Board, um, he might get a look in, you know, he's, he's, he's so... But you never know. But honestly, I don't think any of any of um the spinners will will, will get a look in. And um for Jeremiah Louis, you know, brilliant bowling for him, you know, for the Leeward Islands. Um, but even in the fast bowling department for the West Indies, it, it's hard to see him getting a look in with so many players, you know, Kemar Roach, um, Shamar Joseph, Alzar Joseph, Jaden Seals, um, Jason Holder, who's currently playing in the county championship in England, you know. Um so it, it, it's hard to see a barring injury to any of those players. You know, it's hard to see Jeremiah Louis um, getting a look in, into the West Indies squad as well. But again, like I said, I am not the selectors. I am just, you know, sharing my opinion on what I think. So, um, so yeah, I don't, yeah. So, but so that those are my thoughts on 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 um, the 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 leading wicket takers and run scorer so far in the um, in the championship. You know, so for run scorers, I do think Mikhail Louis, you know, because of his batting position, you know, will might might get a look in. Um, Amir Django as well uh, might get a look in, you know, because of his brilliant form, you know. But again, as you know, scoring runs in the in the West Indies Championship doesn't guarantee you a spot. Um, so Kevin Sinclair will definitely be in the squad, from in my opinion. Um, but as far as the bowlers go, I don't think any of the top bowlers in 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 the championship will get a look into the West Indies squad that towards England. Um, so, but again, we just have to wait and see. You know, um, it, it's the England, I think the England tour is in July. Um, so there's still a bit of time, you know, between now and then, you know, um, where anything can happen. Um, hopefully all the players are, are remain injury free, you know, so the best team, you know, the best squad can be picked to uh, represent West Indies in that series against England. Which will be a very competitive series, especially with the ball. You know, English conditions are very um, bowler friendly. A lot of swing, a lot of movement in the air, a lot of movement off the pitch. So, it should be a good series for bowlers and batsmen alike, right? So, but that's all I have for you in this video, viewers and subscribers. Viewers and subscribers. Um, but as usual, if this is your first time coming across the channel, do remember to hit that subscribe button, like the video, and share your thoughts in the comment section. You know, who. Of, of these um leading run scorers and wicket takers do you think will make the West Indies squad? Let me know in the comment section. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.